This interview is for information only and should not be considered as investment advice or a recommendation to buy shares in the company featured. Welcome to this stock box interview. Joining us today at Stockbox is David Lenigas, Executive Chairman of Vinance. How are you doing this morning, David? Yeah, I'm really good, Pam. Nice to be interviewed by uh, someone that's not Mark. <laughs> well, great to be here, David, and great to speak to yourself. Now, you've just released some news. Tell us more. How many Bitcoin miners have you ordered? Look, it's not a lot to get going. We've got a lot of cash at bank, but, um, but with the halving coming in Bitcoin uh, in the middle of April, um, if you want to be competitive in this market, you need to be upgrading your fleet. And um, so we've ordered an initial 10 S21 uh, ant miner Bitcoin miners, which are pretty much the fastest Bitcoin miners in the world today. Um, we'll put them on trial. The, the key thing is, do the new miners fit in the existing computer data center racks? Um, does the power cope? Uh, have we got enough amperage? You know, what's the connectivity cabling like? All that sort of issue. So we've ordered um, 10 units for delivery in about two weeks. It'll take about a week to hook them up. Uh, we'll be putting them in Canada to sort of supplement our fleet there. And then once we're comfortable that, um, that everything fits and the data center can handle the new S21s, um, we'll, we'll obviously sort of start upgrading the fleet quite quickly from there. So you mentioned that they, they're, they're arriving in about a week. Two weeks. Um, two two weeks. weeks. Yeah. And you're going to start a testing phase. Um, so the how long will that pretty take? quick. I mean, it takes a couple of days to hook them up. I mean, there's only 10. So, I mean, they can hook them up literally within, you know, a couple of hours if all the bits and pieces and the kit's there. And and then you've got to sort of wind them up, gear them up and turn them on. So, you know, it's a couple of days once once they arrive and go through customs and, and hit the data centre. So, yeah, it happens pretty quick. and. And, and we'll know within a day or two of, of the miners spinning uh, if they're suitable for, for the data centre. But, yeah, we're pretty comfortable. Yeah. And how do they compare with your previous S19 uh, Bitcoin miners? Oh, it's, it's, it's chalk and cheese, Pam. I mean, the, the, the S19s that we've got are typically 104 to 120 terahash a second, which is processing speed, which is pretty fast. Um, the new S21s are, are 200 terahash. You can get 180, 190, and 200 terahash, and they are pretty much the fastest Bitcoin mining processing machines in the market today. And, and it's going to be important to stay competitive you know, as the halving comes. I mean, when, when the halving happens you know, in the middle of April, there's 900 Bitcoins a day dropping to 450, and a lot of Bitcoin miners will become uncompetitive because of the cost of power. Whereas you're you're ahead of the game now with these um, S21s. Yeah, I mean, look, we 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 pretty comfortable that our S19 fleet um, in uh, in Canada and America will be certainly economic because we've got a very good power price. Um, but to be competitive, you've really got to be processing a lot more terahash, you know, so you can be competitive in the in the pools um, yeah. to gain the Bitcoin. So yeah, no, we're we're pretty comfortable that we're in the we're pretty much lowest quartile cost producer globally, and that's where we want to stay. So a common theme with Vinance is the use of cheaper, cleaner energy from Quebec Hydro. Yeah, so you... that's great. I mean, we have, yeah. I mean, everybody we speak to um, just goes, wow, you've got a great power price. I mean, if I wanted to sort of go shopping around America in data centers right now, uh, you're talking seven and a half, eight US cents a kilowatt hour, up to 10 US cents a kilowatt hour. Um, our data centers in Canada, where we've got a lot of our kit at the moment spinning, um, the power is from Quebec Hydro, so it's green. They get very good long term commercial rates. They passed a lot of the savings on to us, and, and we're operating at sub US six cents a kilowatt hour. And the more units we put with Block Labs within their Canadian infrastructure, the cheaper our overall price unit is across our fleet. So yeah, we're in a very, very solid, good position. Yeah. So there's so that's the long term strategy, right? When it comes to ensuring the security of low cost green energy, you're managing to do that over in Canada. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, absolutely. And we're looking at a couple of situations in the US where you where they're getting um, um, gas to wire from pig farming, where they um, where they've you know, produced quite a lot of electricity. 
from the methane generated and um, and we can put containerized units at substations. So that, you know, that, that's sort of gaining a fair bit of interest from us as well because the power right. prices is also very competitive. Yeah, yeah, pig farming. Amazing. Pig farming gas, yeah. Uh, now, previously on your S19 miners, the software was upgraded, which made them faster. Now, is there yeah. scope to do that with the, with the new ones, the S21s as well? Yeah, Pat, look, just on the, on the upgrading of the existing fleet, that's still ongoing. Um, they've had to sort of put more amperage um, into, the, into the racks. Uh, they started doing that last week. Uh, when we do upgrade the, the, the firmware or the software into the racks, we get, we get about a sort of a 12% increase. I think probably this week, next week, we should be pretty much across the entire fleet at Block Labs uh, for the S19s, and there's scope to ramp that up even more to maybe 20% extra performance. The thing is, when you speed things up, you use a lot more power. Yeah. And and that's the compromise, and that's why you're know, having a cheap power cost helps us as we speed up the units. On the S21s, um, I just want to be very comfortable running 200 um, terahash a second. And, you know, the, you milk the asset as they come closer to the end of their life. You, you can overclock these things uh, because they won't last too long when you overclock them. It's a bit like running your car in the red line. Sooner or later, they'll just go bang. So uh, as, you, as your machines get older and as they become less competitive with the halvings, then, you know, you try and milk every every piece of processing power out of them, but but right now we've, we're pretty comfortable with the uh, with the S twenty ones at two hundred. So you've got your S twenty ones. You've got ten new machines coming in a yeah, couple of weeks. Yeah, trial machines. You know, we, we'd like to order another couple of hundred of those, and they're yeah. probably quite expensive because they mine twice as much. In fact, they're more than double the price of an S nineteen. Yeah, so you've got to so weigh off the mathematics between the two. Tell me, David, what's the difference? With you, with your S nineteens, when they've been upgraded to the S twenty ones, what's the difference in productivity? So, so with the S nineteens, which have been overclocked, we're, we're running at about one hundred and twenty terahash. Uh, they were originally at one hundred and four. Uh, the S twenty ones will come straight out of the box at two hundred, and you know it'll be anything from two twenty to one ninety five. You know that sort of scenario. They don't all run specifically right on the number. You know, there's a yeah. bit of variability about it. So there's a current momentum in the equities market, including, of course, Bitcoin. Where do you see the sector heading? Oh, and yeah, and a half seven, seven, three and a half thousand US dollars this morning. Who would have thought that? Look, Absolutely. Yeah, historically, I mean, I mean, historically. I mean, you mentioned, David, the, yeah. sorry, you mentioned the halving is coming up soon. Presently, your break even is around $15,000. So tell me more. Well, yeah, I mean, look, the, the break even, it, it, it all depends what the Bitcoin price is and your power price on how competitive you, you are as the halving happens, right? So, yeah. but we've, we've got a very good head start because we get very cheap power. Um, look, historically, when there's been a halving, you're getting a 10x between halvings because the, there is just a lot more, a um, lot less supply and a lot more demand. A lot of Bitcoin miners will become uncompetitive because of their power costs and the, the age of the fleet or where the, their, 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 um, their, their maintenance costs contracts sit. So it all sort of balances out. But you know, you've had 10Xs on the last four or five halvings. And you know, if you're talking 10X um, now from the halving in April, I mean, you're talking anything in the three quarters of a million to a million dollar range for Bitcoin. You know, in in the short term horizon. I mean, I was just reading something this morning that Jamie Dimon, the uh, the, the CEO of Barclays, uh, not Barclays, uh, J.P. Morgan, is uh, sort of turned his view on things and can see the million dollar Bitcoin price from their perspective being accelerated. And and I I firmly believe it. You're, you're seeing you know with the, with the advent of legalized ETF spot. Uh, markets in the US, they're now looking at rolling it out here potentially in the UK. The FCA made some comments on that the other day. Mm. Uh, Asia, Middle East, you've now got big institutional groups who are saying, look, it's acceptable to buy Bitcoin as a cryptocurrency, as an asset class. And I was reading somewhere yesterday that right now, the supply and demand, there's nine times the supply versus the demand for Bitcoin being driven principally by ETFs. So, I mean, 
where is it going? I mean, a million dollars, two million, five million, ten million, infinity. Nobody really knows. And and now that institutions are calling it a valid asset class, just like gold and silver, it's it's become very significant. And I like the fact that Binance is just a Bitcoin miner, principally in North America, and that's where we want to stay. It's very yeah. exciting. Yeah. So it all sounds very exciting. It sounds like there's a lot happening there in the market. You've got these 10 new machines, Bitcoin miners, the S21s that you're going to be testing. Now, assuming everything goes well with the testing, you mentioned that you'd be getting more machines. How yeah, many look, at the moment, we've got about 300. We, you know, th this 10 takes us to about 300 miners operating in North America. Once we put these on test, you know, we, we'd like to be, by the end of the year, you know, in, into the thousands of machines operating within data centers within North, Amer North America. Um, we're looking at, at, at quite unique ways of funding expansions. Uh, can't make too much comment on that right now. Um, but, you know, we want to maintain our position as being a debt-free company. You know, the, other, the other Bitcoin miner in London, which is Argo Blockchain, God bless them, you know, is struggling to get market acceptance because they're struggling with, with their debt burden. And, you know, the board of finance is very, very cautious and mindful that we want to stay Debt free, and that puts us into a unique position, uh, um, you know, from a Bitcoin miner perspective, yeah, you know, from an exchange perspective. Wonderful. Well, David, it's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you, and uh, right. no doubt we'll be uh, speaking to you again in the near future. Great. Thanks for speaking, Pam. Cheers. If you enjoyed this interview, then give us a thumbs up, a like, or a retweet. Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Twitter and hit that notification bell to be the first to know when we release new content. There's loads of great content on our website too, across all our programs at stockboxmedia.com. Thank you for watching.